phenomenal contest. Bernie Gunther, Alex Powers, our entire crew, glad you are with us and glad you are aboard tonight for the second game of the series. It was a four for four night last night for Janae Jefferson, but here she is retired in the first plate now appearance of the night. Player, number 17, Shelby Sunseri. And Janae Jefferson had a huge outing in game number one of the championships, four for four night and some really clutch hitting, a couple of runs scored across the dish. And so far, one of the star players for the Texas Smoke team. So Jefferson gives way to Sinceri. And there's a base hit. Shelby Sinceri getting aboard. Right, the home team tonight, if there is a game three, they will do a coin flip to decide who the home team is. Jefferson, Sinceri, Howe, Klingler, Eccles, Jayquish. Morgan Howe, two singles and an RBI in the playoffs so far. Swings and misses. Got her down on strengths. Two away. Here is a look at the lineup tonight for the Texas Smoke. Janae Jefferson, Shelby Sinceri, Howe, Bailey Klingler in the cleanup spot. Eccles, Jayquish, Bryant, Bruni, and Grimm and Autumn Pease, the WPF Pitcher of the Year. We'll get the starting nod inside the circle. Going up against Allie Carter for the pride tonight. Fly ball into the corner. You got to beat it up. And Allie Carta is one of those pitchers that works really fast in the circle. She wastes no time just attacking the zone. Really efficient with her pitch count, too, more often than not. But one of the common themes here, Bernie, that we've seen is the Pride pitching staff getting off to a slow start. So it's going to be really important for them to come out strong in the circle from the very first pitch. Well, one of the themes that we have seen so far in the series is Lightning delays, and that's where we find ourselves here in the top of the first two away. And a delay here from Oxford, Alabama. We'll keep you up to date on the latest. One thing that I always look for is the grip and how good it is. Another thing too is how big the sweet spot is. Just knowing like even if I do get jammed, if I have a big enough sweet spot, I could still possibly get away with something. The mantra sweet spot will give people that extra oomph that they need in the ball. 
Nothing sounds better than a mantra when you make solid contact with it. You just hear the pop. What's your mantra? Are you ready to take your game to the next level? Look no further than Smash It Sports. At Smash It Sports, we carry the latest in baseball and softball equipment and apparel. Our selection includes top brands like Easton, Rawlings, New Balance, and more. Plus, we offer free shipping on most orders and discounts up to 15% off. With our top-of-the-line equipment, you'll be hitting dingers in no time. And don't forget to represent the brand with our stylish apparel. So what are you waiting for? Head to smashitsports.com and gear up for the season. Smash It Sports. Get your game on.
Black Magic. So I need to try Black Magic. No stabilization. What None? camera? Black Magic? I have a pocket cinema at home. 4K? Uh, yeah, 4K mall. 10 out of 10. Love it. It's an older, it's a couple years old, but it's the solid camera. I hate is that you have to get like an adapter for it. I'd rather just construct EF. Yeah. On the 6Ks, you get EF. On the 4Ks, you're still micro four thirds. I'm fine with see all my I I ran a GH3 beforehand that was micro four thirds yeah. so, so all my lenses six. converted I didn't need a speed booster but you could focus still though natively yeah <laughs> with what lenses um just the Panasonic lenses Panasonic's focused all black magic okay yeah it focuses pretty well from what I've used I don't use those as often anymore I almost use an Olympus 25 millimeter for my, a lot of my I do a lot of video work instead of photography huh. but you know I've heard about Olympus. No, I had my pants on it, for a it while. Came, for the record, it just came with the camera when it got used. That's awesome. Uh, so I just used that one. I, I want to get one of those like stupid wide, like you know, ten millimeter lenses. Yeah. I love shooting stuff with wide angle lenses. That's cool. So, the wider the better. Wilson. Oh, that's Gavin. What'd I do? Wilson. There you go. Wilson. Hey, Wilson. I'm sorry. Oh, no. 
going back by the way. Alex is going back. Yeah, he's, he's rolling red right now. out as well back to back home runs Spalding follows Rudd Colts right three big strikeout for Johnson there Espinosa got her at home she hits the ball there and she's not going to be on board because she's going to leave the yard with a home run a solo shot and Texas is on top five to four field here at Chocolaca Park, but the good news is the tarp is coming off, and tonight, possibly for the first time ever, a trophy is going home, the Schiphauer Cup, going to this year's WPF Championship, and Texas finds themselves with a one-game lead in the series. Ali Carta back into the circle here tonight. Bernie got there, Alex Powers. This is where we sit. Uh, Shelby Sunsiri had a hit back in the first inning. She finds herself at first. Jefferson flew out. Howe struck out. And there's a look at Ali Carta's playoff record so far. Seven innings pitch has not allowed an earned run. Three strikeouts. And Bailey Klingler coming to the plate now. And as we bring you back here with two away. 5-4 win last night. We'll take a look at the highlights in a moment from last night's game number one. And Bailey Klingler just finally got going offensively in last night's game. And we see a fly ball go into center. Play made by... Kilowaddle, and that will retire the side. Let's take a look at the highlights from game number one last night in the ball game. It started in the first inning with the pride back-to-back -back home runs. First, it was Rudd leaving the yard, followed up by Spalding, and the pride found themselves leading three nothing early on. And the pride jumped out early in last night's matchup. The first inning scoring. A few, the first few at bats, but then very quickly the Texas Smoke responded well, scoring two. And then the offense just continued. Third inning. Johnson in. And a misplay there by maybe the MVP of the series so far, Jefferson. Allowed the pride to find their way back on top, but the sixth inning, it was Jefferson in this big shot. Yeah. 
as Texas found themselves with a 5-4 win in game number one. Sam Chow comes in, closes the door down, and Texas, the regular season champions, find themselves in a really solid spot here. One win away from being regular season champions as well as being the tournament champions. Pride the home team here in game number two, going up against the most valuable pitcher in the regular season, Autumn Pease, getting the starting nod inside the circle. Kowalik, Bunker, Aguilar in that order. One ball, one strike. And Autumn P is getting the ball for Texas Smoke tonight. She's been their ace all season long. Yeah. Was named the gone. WPF Pitcher of the Year. And it's going to be so important right now for the Pride offense to jump out early and try to get a lead here, putting together some really good at-bats. There we go. It has been a battle of leadoff hitters here in this championship game. 3-1, ball four, Kowalik draws a walk. Here's a look at the Pride lineup tonight. Kowalik finds a way to get on board a ton. Bunker, Aguilar, it's Rudd, Spalding, Espinosa, Penley getting the starting uh, nod tonight at right field. Kila Weedle and Gooden round out the Pride lineup tonight against Autumn Pease. And I like to see Kelly Kretschmann and Stephanie Co just changing the lineup up and trying to get something different going here for the Pride offense. They say hitting is contagious, and so just trying to get something going. Bunker the batter. A little bit of a, a switch on the lineup tonight. Bunker was in the eighth spot last night, moved up into the two hole tonight. So that's a little bit different, Alex. Well, and I think that's because Allie Bunker has been so good at situational hitting and that number two spot in the lineup gets put in those situations so often. And so it's somebody that can get something done multiple ways here that you want in that spot. And Silent Rain Espinosa has been swinging it well, so I want her bat to continue in one or more of those power positions later in the lineup. I think that's why we see her in that six hole. Last night the Pride were able to score three in the first inning. Foul ball, foul ball. Ground ball foul. One, two, pitch. <laughs> Called strike three. Pease gets a strikeout for out number one here in the first inning. A nice pitch there. bring Aguilar to the plate. Yeah. 
Ali Aguilar had a single last night in the third inning. Drove home. Excuse me, moved over Kowalik. Rudd drove her in. Rudd's kind of really been the MVP for this team so far in, in this series. She has been clutch. She talked about that last night. Two runs, or excuse me, a run scored and two singles so far in the series for Aguilar. Got Jinkwish tonight behind home plate. We saw the Pride try to test her arm earlier and not do so successfully. Three one. Ground ball gets up the middle for a basic. Kowalik into scoring position at second. And Aguilar has her second hit here in this championship series as she comes through in the clutch. Holly Aguilar does a great job just taking this pitch on the outside part of the plate, driving it right back up the middle, getting it a bit off the end of the bat there. But extension so long through the zone, still able to get it through. Two on, one out. Here's Rudd. What? Call it strength. And Autumn Pease is really effective in the circle because she's just going to attack the zone. She's not going to waste a lot of pitches. She's going to stay around the strike zone, really consistent too in that approach. And why wouldn't she be right now, Bernie? They're sitting one nothing in regards to the series. So they've got a bit of wiggle room. Let's we'll see if Rudd can come through with another clutch hit. A solo, excuse me, a two-run home run last night. Came through again with a hit in the third. She has hit the ball on the nose in this championship, and she's got a chance to get the pride, the lead once again here in the bottom of the first. And Autumn Pease knows she's got to be really careful with Rudd here. Well, and Clutch, Jordan Rudd has been dangerous in those clutch situations. She's come through big in a couple of moments that have really turned the way of the pride and put them on top. Well, but here in this scenario, she grounds it over to Jefferson, who tags Aguilar and tosses it over to first, and they turn the double play. It, oh, wait a minute. Tori Tyson had to talk things over on the infield, try to take another look. What did you see there? They're calling Wasn't Aguilar much. safe like she danced around. I was gonna say, yeah, tag. she might have missed she might have missed the tag. And if you see any kind of obstruction call right there, it has to go to the defender who has the right to make the play. So even if there was any kind of contact there, the base runner is automatically out, it becomes a dead ball. But they might be saying that Aguilar avoided the tag. Tori Tyson, definitely not happy with that because that would have been a double play in her inning. And Victor Canales, the umpire making that call. Let's see if we can take one more look at, didn't look like the tag came there. 
Dude, it should have been two, but I guess you got to credit Aguilar of dancing her way around and now giving Spalding a chance. Here's another look. Yeah. Well, and that hit was almost perfectly placed right there in regards to location and timing and everything in between, but Ali Aguilar doing a great job. So Spalding. A great at the call plate. by Victor. Ground ball backhanded and uh, Grimm. Gets it over to Bailey Klingler, and that retires the side. 6-3 in the books. Pride strand two in scoring position. End of one. Scoreless here in game number two. One thing that I always look for is the grip and how good it is. Another thing too is how big the sweet spot is. Just knowing like even if I do get jammed, if I have a big enough sweet spot, I could still possibly get away with something. The mantra sweet spot will give people that extra oomph that they need in the ball. Nothing sounds better than a mantra when you make solid contact with it. You just hear the What's your mantra? There's a look at how the Pride and the Smoke both advanced. The Smoke and Vipers went to three games in the best of three in the opening round. And uh, Pride, a couple of tight games against the Oklahoma City Spark. But they wound up advancing. Two games to none. Well, and the smoke coming in is that number one seed from the regular season. It's no surprise that they're here, but I think right now it's safe to say that momentum has been going their way. They dropped that first game in the series to play into the championship tournament to the Vipers and then quickly responded in the next two and then very quickly again took game one of this championship series again. So just kind of leaning into that momentum offense coming through in some big moments and their pitchers have been lights out. Eccles, Jaquish, Bryan. Eccles doubled two singles, two runs batted in. Flies it out to right there. It's going to fall between Aguilar and Penley for a base hit. The second of the ball game for Texas. And they got the leadoff hitter aboard here in the second. And Jaquish checks into the box, and she's a huge reason why Texas finds themselves in the championship. She had the big hit against the Vipers. And Savannah Jaquia showing her power play out there. That was the difference maker in their win against the Vipers. Savannah Jaquia is not new to coming through in big moments. She did it in the NCAA. She does it in the WPF. She's somebody that's just a total gamer. And she's somebody, Bernie, that has just been so consistent throughout her career. Like I said, watching her play and competing against her in college, you know, she was somebody that was just always coming through in the big moments. She loved the, the spotlight and was somebody that wanted the bat in her hands all the time. And that's definitely carried over at the professional level, if not more so.
Trying to pitch extremely well. So far in the playoffs here in Oxford. One one at Jaquish, she turns on it. Hit a ton, but a ton foul. Brandon Phillips, the owner of the Texas Smoke, hoping that she can straighten that one out. Texas, look at this. Look Brandon at Phillips. Together. <laughs> Both added in uh, two teams added to the league this year. That's been a big storyline, Alex, adding the Texas Smoke and Oklahoma City oh, Spark to the Vipers and the Pride here in this first inaugural season of the WPF. They've been great additions to the league as a whole. Of course, you look at their seasons and the success that each of the teams had. Texas Smoke coming in in that number one spot. Incredible outing for their first year at the professional level. First year of creation, all led by head coach right there, Tori Tyson and Brandon Phillips at the helm. So much that goes on and goes into building a team and a program to find so much success so quickly. And then also Oklahoma City coming in too at that number two spot, didn't make it to the championship series, but still had a great and phenomenal first year of creation. So many big players and big names on these two teams. And it's only up from here. Good eye, 16 miles an hour, ball three. Down and inside, and the count is full to Jaquish. Second hitter here in the second. Held back out of the zone. And Jaquish draws a walk in the first two reach for Texas here in the second. This is big right now for the smoke. The ability to have a couple of good plate appearances back to back. Looking for a couple more here. Trying to get something going with their offense. Get people in motion. Applying pressure to the defense. That's exactly what Charlie Eccles did. With that leadoff single. Savannah Jaquish really good eye in the box. So Brian the batter. Nobody out for Texas. A big spot for them here in the top of the second. Let's see she offered at it. And it evens the count of the ball and a strike. And we talked about the shifting of the Pride lineup. Bernie just moving some people around, getting people in positions for situational opportunities. Sierra Bryan is exactly that person for the smoke. Looking to her specifically to get something crafty here with her bat. She can do the short game. She can swing it with some power too. Took a cut there. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Got to credit these Texas hitters. They are being patient tonight against Carta. That's what's a little scary, too. They look patient. They look comfortable. They look confident. When you have hitters that are slow in the box, it's a really good sign for that offense. Really scary for the pitcher at the circle. It does help when you're leading in the series. Got a game to burn. Obviously, they don't want to go to that decisive game number three. But it's there if needed. Two and two with two on and nobody out. And Brian, who's had a number of clutch hits so far in the series, down on strikes. One away here in the third. 
That will bring Anna Marie Bruni to the plate. Coach, right here, fives in, zeroes out. Five and that zero, pitch zero, down zero. in the zone, too, just so effective from Carta. Not even close, but good enough out of the hand to get Sierra Bryan swinging, wanting to make the attempt there. And that, as a hitter, is when you, you kind of get stuck in that rut of having your mind made up before the pitch is even thrown that you're going to swing no matter where that pitch is. And that's a dangerous place to be. This has been Texas's script so far. <laughs> Bruni comes to the plate. They pinch it with Mason. Wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see Rivera bat next as well, based on what we have seen. They've got a chance to produce here in the second, and they're hoping that Mason can get the offense going. And why wouldn't you, right? Just trying to get people in motion, doing something early in the ball game. Elizabeth Mason swings a good bat, a big bat, and she's come th through in some clutch situations. Grim currently in the on-deck circle, so we'll see if she comes into the box or if they pinch it for her with Rivera. But it probably comes down to what happens here. Two balls and a strike, two on, one out. And Mason ahead in the count. Swings and misses, two and two. Big spot for Texas early on. Two, two. Ground ball, a nice scoop by Spalding, and she'll flip it over to Bunker, who's at third, and they get the out. So Mason gets aboard on a fielder's choice, and Grim will come to the plate here. Anna Marie Bruni will re enter the game. Green, okay. So Bruni re enters. And after the first two reached for Texas here in the second. Carter gets two outs, a strikeout of Bryant and Mason down on a fielder's choice. And that's good softball right there too, just the infield getting that lead runner. Again, really trying to limit any base runners getting to third base. The threat of being just 60 feet away is a big one. Yep, she's re no courtesy, no courtesy. Yeah, yeah. Jake Wish is going to say, I don't need a courtesy run. I'm going to run for myself. Right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Running in first, number zero, Honorary Bruni. I guess the scenario you get uh, the courtesy runner, you can uh, sometimes, I guess, take it or leave it. You get a Jake Wish that maybe runs a little bit quicker. You keep her on. You got somebody that gets out ahead of time that's a little bit faster. Why not take the courtesy runner? <laughs> it's all about the strategic play, and Savannah Jakewish wants to come in and potentially score herself. She's like, no, coach, I got it. So Grimm's the batter in the nine hole. Jefferson do up next. Bunt laid down. It's a beauty. No play for Bunker, and the bases are loaded. Texas has them loaded up here in the second, and they got their MVP coming to the plate, and Jefferson. And that's a great butt execution by Grimm. Just applying the pressure. It's almost that slap bunt type of feel. Got a good piece of it. 
But Ali Bunker playing deep over there at third base. Graham just laying it down beautifully right down the line. A lot of speed on the base path, too. So Bonk unable to come up with anything. Base is juice right now for the best hitter in the league. Jefferson last night was four for four. It's a big first pitch strength. Take a look at the playoffs. Home run, double, six singles. And she's got a chance to give Texas the early lead. Bernie, are those stats pretty good? Not a bad day, especially the four for four <laughs> in last night's ball game. That was an unbelievable outing. Four for four, scored three times too. So that's just a testament of not only is she doing great, but the team around her and the hitters around her coming through executing. I don't think at the moment there's any doubt of who the series MVP would be. One, two, out of the zone. Single, double, single, and that solo home run in the sixth that put Texas on top. It's the storyline last night for Jefferson. And Alex, she scored three of the five runs, 2-2. Two -two. Got away. And that's, I think, one of my favorite stats, too, when I was a player myself and now on the other side calling the games is I love to see how many runs these athletes and these hitters are scoring because that just is a two-fold testament there of how much and how frequently they're getting on base, but then the hitters around them, how, how good are they and how much are they executing and coming through? Two balls. RBIs are great, but runs scored is a fun one. Well, that's the, the key for Jefferson is she can do both. She can drive in runs. And she's also got great speed. Two and two. Out away again. Jaquish on third, Bruni on second, Grimm on first, Texas, bases loaded, Carter trying to get out of a jam here in the second. The 2-2, two -two. and caught by Bunker, and Carter gets out of the jam after a four for four night last night for Janae Jefferson. Tonight, Carter's gotten her twice. This time she lines out to end the inning as Texas leaves them loaded. And we're still scoreless early on in game two of the championship. Are you ready to take your game to the next level? Look no further than Smash It Sports. At Smash It Sports, we carry the latest in baseball and softball equipment and apparel. Our selection includes top brands like Easton, Rawlings, New Balance, and more. Plus, we offer free shipping on most orders and discounts up to 15% off. With our top-of-the-line equipment, you'll be hitting dingers in no time. And don't forget to represent the brand with our stylish apparel. So what are you waiting for? Head to SmashItSports.com and gear up for the season. Smash It Sports. Get your game on. Beautiful night here in Oxford, Alabama, high above the WPF's inaugural championship. Pitcher of the year, on a piece going for Texas, trying to lead them to being the inaugural champions. And peace has been so good for the smoke all season long. 
looking to come in here tonight and secure the victory, secure the season, secure the championship series here. But what a first year that would be, Bernie, too, just coming in, first-year team, and just absolutely coming in, kicking butt, taking names. Silent Rain, Espinosa. Espinosa, Penley, and Keila Wadel doing for the pride here in the second. Espinosa looking for her second hit of this series. Hey. Playing for the Schiffhauer Cup in honor of the late owner of the Smash It Sports Vipers, Rick Schiffhauer, who was one of the founding members of this league. Invested in the vision right from the get-go. He's with the one two pitch. And they say it hit her. And Espinosa gets aboard. Pride with a base runner in back to back innings. That brings Shelby Penley to the plate. And this is what the Pride have been so good at all season long, are the situational hitting opportunities, putting people in motion, applying the pressure to the defense, making them come through and make perfect plays, perfect throws. And that's how they found some victories, especially late in the season, Bernie. Fun lay down. It's a good one, Shelby Penley. That's why she's in the lineup tonight, folks. A veteran getting the job done, lays down the bunt, moves Espinosa into scoring position. And it gives Kila Weedle chance to drive in the game's first run here in the second inning. Espinosa with great speed on second. You can see Weddell trying to do a bit of a sneaky bunt there. Trying to push down the line, put it where they're not. Little trying to get her first hit of the playoffs right here in game number two. This would be a spot. It is interesting tonight because you would have expected Carta piece inside the circle. Probably this nothing nothing game. But it hasn't been a cruising through nothing, nothing game like we saw at least earlier in the playoffs. Already both these teams with lots of action, lots of drama on the base pass, still just looking for that clutch hit. Trying to see who can come through. One ball, two strikes. The one, two, fouled away. And Spinoza waiting on second, hit by a pitch to start the inning. Bottom of the lineup for the Pride, eight, nine, and one. Up here in the bottom of the second with one out. Here's the one two from Peace. 
Pass deflected off the glove, and they're going to try to throw to first. And that was the wrong play, and it gets under the glove of Bailey Klingler, and Espinosa will score. And the Pride are on the board, leading one to nothing. And look at the fancy footwork on the base pass. They find themselves at third now. And that's what we talk about when we mention just applying the pressure to the defense. Well hit ball by Kayla Weddle getting right past Pease. Klingler unable to come up with it there. The throw getting by. First baseman Espinoza easily coming in to score, but again, it's the back-to-back -back mistakes right there. Weddle making her way all the way to third base, and now the Pride continue to be in a run threat territory. I said, hey, why not go to third? <laughs> Might as well, right? And it's those small moments, those small mistakes right there that can come back to haunt you. Tough one between Grimm and Klingler. And Roby's gonna bat here for the Pride with one away. A deep fly ball could get the Pride a two nothing lead. And there's lots of softball to be played, but you think about the storyline so far Texas, first two on board. Not able to score in the top of the second. Pride get a base runner on here in the second, and they find a way, at least for the moment, to get Espinosa in, and they're still with a chance to do even more damage here in the second, depending on what comes up. But they get a strikeout there, Autumn Pease. A big strikeout for Texas, and there's two away. And that's why Autumn Pease has been the ace in the circle for the smoke all summer long. Just coming through in those big moments, getting the strikeout when she needs to, not allowing things to linger. But Bernie, we talk so much about statistics and odds, and it is, it's going to be that hit by pitch by Espinosa to lead off the inning that's going to come back around to Hunter as you see Pease getting Roby swinging right there. Those free passes, the walks, the hit by pitches, and sometimes even those errors and the small mistakes in the field come back to haunt you, and more often than not, come around to score. So Roby retired on strikeout here is Kowalik. The Pride's clutch leadoff hitter. What a season she had, number two this year in batting average, only behind Janae Jefferson. She batted 394 during the regular season at 43 hits. Popped up there. Eccles had a chance, but it's still gonna be a tough play. Lost it for a moment. It falls to the turf and Kowalik's gonna get another opportunity. The WPF Rookie of the Year. She was everything for the Pride this season. And in a season that had ups and downs for the Pride, I'd say Kowalik was really consistent basically all season long, Alex. She's been so good. She's been so fun to watch out there. 2-2, two, two, ball three, great eye. The count is full, Bunker due up next. Three ball, two strike. And it's the transition for me, Bernie. It's the transition from college and into the pro level too that I think says the most about these athletes and their potential. Big pitch from Pease, the payoff pitch put into play. Fielded by Grimm and she'll toss it over to first and retire the side, but Espinosa, hit by pitch, comes in to score. And the Pride strike first, they lead it one nothing after two.
Here's a look at the all WPF team here in the inaugural season. Look at all the stars here in this league. Well, you see Janae Jefferson right up there. Fale Lua from Oklahoma City led the league in home runs. Morgan Howe, Offensive Player of the Year. Silent Rain Espinoza, rookie. Donnie Goborn, a rookie for Oklahoma City Spark. Ali Carta, great pickup this summer by the Pride. And Sam Shaw has been one of my favorite athletes to watch throughout the duration of the season. Shelby Sinceri leading things off. Sinceri, Howe, and Bailey Klingler do up here in the third for Texas. Trailing by a run, but they do lead in the series one game to none. Carta. Challenged in the second inning. Eccles and Jaquish both got aboard to begin the inning. But she found a way to get out of the jam and she got a huge out. Getting the season MVP, Jefferson. To end the second. But you get the feeling Texas is too good to play with fire. They are, you can't waste any time with them and you can't allow them to linger too long. They'll come around to Hancha. Play with fire, you're gonna see the smoke. <laughs> Good pun there, Bernie. Pay up pitch. Down the line, foul. Siri aboard for the second time tonight. And that pitch just getting away from Ali Carter there. Shelby Sinceri getting that walk, like you mentioned, Bernie. Got on in the first with a single, now again in the third with the walk. But Ali Carter wanting to go right at these hitters right now with the pride. Having that one run lead, not a lot of room to work with. You don't want to put people on base because we've seen the smoke come through with the big swings time and time again, especially with a hitter like Morgan Howup, Offensive player of the year for the league. A big threat too with the power game and everything in between. She struck out at her first plate appearance, but she drove in 31 runs on the season. Lays down a bunt there. This is a smoke team, not afraid to do the little things. You got Howe, who again had 31 runs batted in, but doing what she can to get a runner in scoring position. And that's selfless hitting. You have your offensive player of the year league-wide laying down the sacrifice bunt just to get somebody in scoring position to get the bat passed over to Bailey Klingler, the rookie out of Washington. Number two pick overall in the WPF draft. And another chance for Texas here in back-to-back -back innings to try to score their first run of the game. A little <laughs> blooper and in comes Kayla Wadle. A brilliant diving effort for her. Wow. And Kayla Wadle just shining out there with the glove, laying out 
making this brilliant catch right there. Love to see it. That's a huge game-saving potential play by Kayla Weddle. Love to see that effort. Got the wind knocked out of her a bit, too. Just making sure she's okay. Laid out to make this play. Look at the jump and the reach she got, too. Bernie just absolutely wasting no time, covering so much ground out there. That ball's essentially falling in no man's land if Weddle doesn't make that diving grab. And then the immediate flip, too, and the awareness that she had. Almost a little disappointed, too, at how that play finished up with Bunker at third base, almost not even ready to receive the ball, too, with the runner advancing on the catch. Of course, she can re-enter. Shomo's going to go out and move into center field now. We have seen so many great plays here in this championship. Weddle there. Brilliant. Laying out. Let's give it all for your team right here. Take another look here. So right off the bat, Weddle just gets a great jump. Crashing in so well. And look at the lateral dive and then the immediate flip. Like I said, I love the awareness from Weddle on that. She just immediately makes that grab. Phenomenal play, but wastes absolutely no time flipping it over there to Spalding. Trying to get that lead runner she knows is advancing. Here's Eccles, single to start the second. She was not brought in, but she's got a chance to tie the ball game here, depending on what she can do. Tying run on third, two away. Eccles has already driven in two in the series, a chance to drive in her third run here. Ball and a strike. Runner on third. Five hole hitter for Texas. Off speed. And 43 miles an hour. That's put on the brakes. Three balls and a strike. Jayquish awaiting on deck. Payout pitch, ball four. Eccles draws a walk. That's a good patient at bat by Charlotte Eccles. And not trying to force anything right there out of the hand alley. Carta in the circle, just letting her go right at these hitters. 
not painting the zone too effectively right now, so they're just patient in the box. Crutcher out to talk to Carta and company to see how they want to deal with Jayquish. Troy Tyson huddling with her group. Crutcher and squad leading by a run, trying to force a game three. Ready now. First pitch in there for a called strike. And on the infield, caught by Spaulding. Texas back-to-back -back innings and opportunity. But Carta gets out of a jam as she gets Jayquish and it sends us on to the bottom of the third after a spectacular catch by Keila Weddle. And probably cling into a one-nothing lead. Madison Little here with Jade Cargill and Brandon Phillips, owners of the Texas Smoke. Jade, I have to ask you, yes. how has this league helped impact the growth of women in sports? I mean, it's done nothing but place new steps for women who want to be involved in such a phenomenal sport. We're here to help the next generation and create footsteps for them. And then in terms of growth of the league, what can we look forward to in terms of expansion or just in the upcoming championship this week? Oh, gosh, a lot. Fun, excitement. I mean, honey, take this away. You got this. Well, um, this first year, yes, we're basically trying to show everybody the blueprint of what we're capable of doing. And all we can really do is just show people what we're going to do and make it happen. Yes. Well, thank you guys both so much and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. There they are, front and center, watching the ball game. Little star power in the stands. Brandon Phillips, four-time Major League Baseball Gold Glove winner. Jade Cargo, Brandon TBS Phillips. champion. Yeah. Some star power making a difference in the game of women's softball. And Brandon Phillips obviously having played at the highest level in Major League Baseball. But what I like too about Jade Cargill is the fact that she's found so much success too at an elite level in such a unique space within the women's wrestling and all that she's in the middle of. She's got that stardom as well. And she's been fun to watch. She's all about the theatrics and the drama and just bringing it to the marketing side at the game of softball. So she's been somebody fun that I've just listened to. Bunker, Aguilar, Rudd in that order here. And again, these are the people investing in the future of women's professional softball. In here on the, the ground floor, if you will. League likely to expand next year. But it takes a couple at the beginning to really believe in the game, believe in the vision, believe in the players. You see Bunker with a base hit.
Punker doing a great job right there. Just continuing the hot streak right now for the Pride. Got moved up a couple of spots tonight in the lineup in that two hole. I'm looking to pack a punch. And there is second leadoff spot. Don Didonatus, the former CEO of UAAA, his son. Donnie Didonatus has been at the ballpark all week. And again, uh, you know, same thing, his vision, getting the pride into professional softball more than a decade ago, his son carrying on that vision with UAAA and vesting in this pro league last year along with Rick Schiffauer and Smash It Sports. And you know, these are the people that are setting the tone for future softball players years to come. Hopefully some future pros watching tonight will have a chance to play and compete for this Rick Schiffauer Cup just like Ali Aguilar and Peace are doing tonight. But they couldn't do it without uh, the likes of all these owners. Oklahoma City jumping in the league this year. It's interesting because Don Dinatis was actually the general manager of the Smash It Sports Vipers. This is a great catch over at first, and it's a double play. Bailey Klingler reaps up and grabs it. And there's two outs here in the third. What a play. And look at the defense right there by Bailey Klingler. Just almost playing that hot corner. Over there at first base, jumping up, making the grab. Ali Bunker getting stuck and frozen on the line drive. Not much you can do right there, but Bailey Klingler doing what she does best, just flashing some leather. Big out because instead of run coming to the plate with a runner on board with another chance to drive in a run, she's driven in three so far in the playoffs. She comes to the plate with the bases empty, trying to get her first hit of the ball game. outside for a ball. Two ball two strike. Got her swinging. Bailey Klingler comes up and turns the double play, and then Autumn Peace gets a strikeout to move us on here in Oxford, Alabama to the fourth, where the Pride try to force an if game, leading one to nothing. Want to play like a pro? Stand out. Be different on and off the field. Custom gear, look, and feel. Welcome to the pro experience. New Balance Team Sports. As we saw last night in the Home Run Derby, there are so many different types of swings that can be considered successful. We want to be strong, and plus, in our sport, we want to be able to connect our lower body to our upper body, right? Even at the collegiate level, 
Athletes don't know enough information about nutrition to properly be fueling their bodies. As you get older and grow, that your brand should grow with you and what you're posting should grow with you. Take a look at the regular season comparison between these two teams. You can see the smoke. Lots of runs scored, almost 50 on the season. But overall, the record between these two teams is pretty tight. Only two games different, seven and five. The Smoke were in the head-to-head -head matchup. Two more wins than the Pride. A handful more all WPF selections. But um, and the, the storyline of the season, we talked about it going into the series last night, is just how tightly these two teams played. We saw so many extra inning games during the regular season. You saw last night it was a real nail biter. Until Janae Jefferson hit that solo shot at the bottom of the sixth, we were really back and forth, all tied up. And here we find ourselves in another one run ball game, top of the fourth, and Brian at the plate. It's seven, eight, and nine. Brian, Bruni, and Grimm, and a strikeout to begin things. Cardis hoping that it's a little bit quicker of an inning here in the fourth. Well, these two teams have been so fun to watch compete back and forth. Bernie so evenly matched. As you take a look right there, Ali Carta just getting Sierra Bryan swinging something on the outside part of the plate. A little bit out of the zone, but not too bad. Definitely would have been a strike even if she hadn't swung. Love that pitch location by Carta. And I think more than anything right there is something that you notice on athletes and hitters, more specifically, hitters like that, like Sarah Bryan, that's not necessarily your power type of hitter. You can stay around the zone a little bit more than you can against, say, a Morgan Howe or a Bailey Klingler, or somebody that has a bit more of pop in their bat. And just kind of that next level thinking and approach, too, by Card in the circle is going to help her throughout the next several innings. First at bat of the ball game for Bruni, grounds it over to Spalding. And there's two quick outs. And Carter has a chance for her first one, two, three inning of the ball game. If she can get Grimm here, that is. So Grimm's the batter. It's a big out here for Grimm because they have gotten Jefferson twice tonight, but the law of averages says that uh, she is due at least at one point tonight to get a hit. Two singles in the playoffs for Madison Grimm. Right back to Carta, and Carta gets a one, two, three inning, a strike out of Brian, a ground out of Bruni, and then she handles Grimm. Pry come back to the plate, up a run here in game number two, trying to force game three tomorrow night.
A look high above here in Oxford, Alabama. Beautiful night for softball. This gorgeous complex hosting the inaugural WPF championship. And the pitcher of the year, Pease, has only allowed a run so far. But at the moment, it's enough. Pace has had a great outing so far. It's been minimal offense overall. Pard looking to tack a couple more on right now would really help their cause. Spalding, Espinosa, and Penley do up for the pride. Espinosa scored the game's only run. She awaits on deck, hit by a pitch. Found a way to work her way around the base pass. Balding grouted out in her first plate appearance. Delaney Spalding came through big last night. It would be nice to see her come through again here soon. The big swing. From Spalding in the first yesterday was what we thought to be a good difference maker <laughs> early in the ball game, Bernie. The smoke obviously proving us wrong. He's looking for a quick fourth. It's a called strike two and two. Two ball, two strikes. He's two two pitch. Got her. Spalding down on strikes. Fourth strike out of the ball game. Spalding, Spalding couldn't check her falling. swing. Spalding falling victim right there to that changeup down in the zone. Tough pitch to lay off of because it just feels so good right out of the hand. You can see the velocity differential, but then it just falling off the table as it crosses the plate. That's a great pitch by Adam Pease. So here is Espinosa who scored the game's only run. Hit by pitch, Penley able to move her over to second with a sacrifice bunt. And then Whittle brought her in. But right now she's behind 0-2 as P's trying to get back-to-back -back strikeouts. Then she go. She'll earn one more pitch. On MPs, 56 strikeouts. Third most in the league during the regular season. Seven more than Ali Carta. Trying to get her third straight strikeout here. Instead put into play. Espinosa will earn another pitch, grounding it foul. Can I get two? I get two. Yeah, that's good. looks relaxed. Here's the one two. Fouled away again. The sixth pitch of this at bat upcoming to Espinosa.
Got her. Three strikeouts in a row for Autumn Peace, and she's got five Ks in the contest. And Autumn Pease, again, leaning into something down in the zone. That off-speed pitch, having good and late break there. Crossing the plate all the way to Espinoza. Shelby Penley helped the Pride execute. The veteran in in this critical game to she drew 14 walks during the regular season, tied for seventh. I think that's what Crunch was hoping. At one point during the regular season, that Penley would get in a groove offensively. It just truly never came this year. Hoping that she can find her swing here in this championship series. Two and two. Pease with the chance to strike out the side. Autumn Pease strikes out the side. She strikes out Spalding, Espinosa, and then Penley. Six Ks in the contest. And Texas down a run, but hoping tonight. Our cup. One thing that I always look for is the grip and how good it is. Another thing too is how big the sweet spot is. Just knowing like even if I do get jammed, if I have a big enough sweet spot, I could still possibly get away with something. The mantra sweet spot will give people that extra oomph that they need in the ball. Nothing sounds better than a mantra when you make solid contact with it. You just hear the What's your mantra? It is out. The Ship Power Cup has arrived in Oxford, Alabama. Texas hoping that they can bring it home tonight. They need a win. The Pride, they could take it home, but it would have to be tomorrow night. Tory Tyson squad won game number one, five to four. Pride hoping to force a game three. That would be on the air, eight o'clock Eastern. Spalding able to get to it, but can't make a throw. And we told you she'd get on board at some point. Jefferson with her first hit of the ball game leads off the fifth. And then the script would tell you that Sinceri is gonna lay down a bunt. We'll see if that is to be. After a four for four night, a night ago, Jefferson getting her first step. The tying run aboard. Bunt laid down Double. in foul territory. You can just see how fast 
Janae Jefferson is. Seemed like by the time the ball hit the turf, she was nearly at the bag already at second. And Carta tries to get Jefferson, and everybody's safe. Jefferson gets in at time, since Siri's going to reach first. And there's two on with nobody out, and the tying runs in scoring position. And this is what you call applying the pressure to the defense right there. You see Sinceri just laying down that sacrifice butt. But Janae Jefferson having so much speed on the base path, easily sliding into second. Looked to be a bang-bang play, but Jefferson got her foot in there plenty of time. And then we'll see if Morgan Howell, she shows bunt, understands that if she can lay down a bunt here, Texas would have... The tying run at third and the go-ahead run in scoring position here in the fifth. Two balls, no strikes. Bailey Klingler due up next. The offensive player of the year at the plate here on the top of the fifth. Oh, it takes a called strike. Yeah. Caught the corner. A pitch down in the zone, no doubt. Morgan Howe not pleased with that call, but the strike zone is getting a bit expanded the further into the game we go. Three balls, one strike. Carter behind the count. In danger of loading the bases here in the fifth with nobody out. Texas trying to get a big inning. And how missed her opportunity there to execute. And I would assume that would take the bun away now with two strikes. Texas getting into it. Trying to find the tying run here in the fifth with the offensive player of the year and she's going to draw the walk and the bases are loaded. Bases loaded, nobody out in the cleanup hitter. And Bailey Klingler coming to the plate. Big moment right now for the smoke to see what they're going to be able to do and capitalize on. Bases loaded, nobody else. A lot of things going their way in a couple of back to back to back good plate appearances. And Cardi can't find the zone, 1 0. Both of Klingler's hits came last night a double and a single. And she comes through and has a huge hit. It's going to go to the wall. Texas is going to take the lead here in the fifth as Bailey Klingler comes through and gets it done for Texas. It's three to one. And Bailey Klingler, the power game that we're accustomed to at this point. She's so good with the bat and so consistent too, driving this one deep into the gap over the head of Shamont. Bases clearing, extra bases for Bailey Klingler. A three RBI double. And Eccles has a chance to add to the total. Yeah. 
and Bernie Bailey Klingler is no stranger to clutch moments too. We've seen it so often throughout her career. And here she is again coming through in a big moment, putting her team on top. Single and a walk tonight for Eccles. Well, Roberts was warming up in the Pride bullpen, but now back to the dugout. Nichols takes a called strike, two and one. Three and one. Carter has been playing with fire all game long. And Eccles is going to have her second hit of the ball game. It's going to score Bailey Klingler. And Texas is on top, 4-1. to one. A four-run fifth inning for the Smoke. Charla Eccles continuing the hitting streak here. Hitting is contagious, Bernie, and driving this one deep again over the head. I love the power game right now that we're seeing from these smoke hitters taking full advantage of pitches over the plate. You see Brandon Phillips standing on top of the side there. He's fired up. What an inning. The fourth hit of the inning for Texas. And back-to-back -back doubles has given the Smoke the lead. And Tory Tyson squad looking good up by three now here in the top of the fifth. And Roberts coming into the ball game now for the Pride. Trying to find that first out here in the fifth. Worked only one and two-thirds innings, 4.2 ERA. The regular season champions find themselves leading here in the fifth inning. Doing a great job, just really changing the narrative here, turning things around to go their way. Big shift to momentum late in this ball game. So Roberts going to go up against Jayquish here. Walk back in the second. Line down in the third. And lots of smiles for Texas who find themselves on top here. They put the pride down. Just a handful of outs remaining in their season if they can't score some runs. Slow roller, Aguilar able to get Jayquish. Brown number one, Eccles is going to move to third. Mm -hmm. 
And we see even that right there, that bad bat by Savannah Jakewish, Bernie, the slow roller to Ali Aguilar, still being a productive out. Charlotte Eccles moving over to third base now, just 60 feet away from another run coming in for the smoke. And Sierra Bryan, a lot she can do to be successful. Bryan struck out twice. He's got a chance to make it 5-1 smoke. Back to Roberts, she'll check the runner. They throw it over to first and they get two out. So Roberts coming in and she's done her job so far. She gets Jayquish, she gets Brian. And she's gotta get Anna Marie Bruni to get out of the inning. The eighth hitter here in the fifth. And it all started with Jefferson getting her first hit of the ball game. And then the hit parade kept coming for Texas. Single by Jefferson. Sincere walk to Howe. And then Klingler and Eccles both with doubles. Two and two. Got two balls, two strikes. Anna Marie Bruni battling here in the fifth. Trying to drive home Eccles, who finds herself at third and get her first playoff hit. The 2-2. A little blooper, it falls, and Bruni's got her first hit of the playoffs. And Texas is a top five to one. And they will bat nine here in the fifth. And smiles all around. Anna Marie Bruni just poking it right there over the head. A bunker of Spalding right in front of Shaman out there and left. Charlotte Eccles easily coming in to score. That's all you got to do, Bernie. Just put it where they're not. It's as simple as that. First hit of the playoffs and all smiles. And Texas is feeling it, folks. Grimm is the ninth hitter here in the fifth inning. Got to talk to Roberts. Madison Grimm looking to keep it going here for the smoke. Seeing the ball well. You never want to be that last out of the inning, especially when you've had five runs come in to score. It's kind of like that small game 
with your own team, with your own self of, yeah, I don't want it to be me, right? Everybody else is hitting. I want to continue that hot streak. Well, the one that got it going is due up next. And you know that they want the rest of our team and owners herself want the bat in the hand of Janine Jefferson. So again, you don't want to be the person taking that shot away. Three balls and no strikes. Big strength there. As if you're Roberts, you're hoping that Jefferson comes to the plate in the sixth and not in the fifth. Oh, wow, back deep and gone. Grimm with a two run home run and Texas is on top seven to one. The runs keep coming for the smoke. Madison Grimm just taking this pitch on the outside, but middle part of the plate, driving it right deep center field, dead center to Bernie. And she got all of that one. They cleared the beat bleachers, folks. Jefferson's going to bat for the second time in the inning. Started this fifth inning party. Janae Jefferson came in to tie the ball game. That was a long time ago. Yes, Texas finds themselves up by six now. And a fly ball out to left, retires the side. Texas came in to the fifth, trailing, but they bring 10 to the plate. And even a five to one, Grimm comes in with a little exclamation on top. A two run home run to cap a seven run fifth inning as Texas has eyes to be the first ever WPF champion. the pitcher of the year finds herself in the circle in quite an impressive fashion now up seven to one let's look at our award winners this year she was the pitcher of the year Texas also has the player of the year Janae Jefferson 
Cheryl was the defensive player of the year for Oklahoma City and the Spark. And a lot of work to be done for the Pride, trailing by six. After what an inning for Texas. And right now, trailing by six, the Pride are just looking to put together and string together a few good plate appearances and some competitive at-bats. One swing is not gonna change this ball game right now. So got to do it by way of numbers, and power by numbers. Shoma with her first at bat of the ball game. Three balls and a strike. It starts with the base runner here in the bottom of the fifth. One lay down, it's a good one. They're gonna get the out at first. Problem is, down by six. I'm sure the bunt is helping you a ton, but I thought maybe good to have the speed to try to beat it out. Good execution right there on that bunt, but to your point, Birdie, one run, one person on base is not gonna necessarily prove to be the difference maker here. The Pride searching for six. So at this point, again, I'm not the coach and I don't get paid the big bucks for it, but you just gotta be swinging it right now. Top of the lineup and uh, it's Kowalik. Walking a ground out for the prime leadoff hitter. Texas and you're up by a run or two, you'd feel pretty good with Autumn Pease inside the circle. You have to feel really good up by six. Hard hit but foul. He's with six strikeouts so far in game two. Well, 
Takes the pitch out of the zone. Two balls, two strikes. The 2-2. And great catch by Jefferson. Man, she could do it all. Leaps up to snag that one there. What can't she do, folks? Janae Jefferson so good with the glove. Just look at how much air she gets on that. Making it look so effortless. Just the one hand grab, so much athleticism, and then immediately looking over there at second base to see if she can get another out. And then snagged by Eccles. Texas offensive clinic in the top of the fifth and a defensive clinic in the bottom of the fifth. Look at the snag to retire the side and send us on to the six where Texas marching closer to a championship. Beautiful night here in Oxford, Alabama. Seven runs, eight hits for Texas. After a seven-run fifth, you wonder what are they going to do for the encore here? Hope you know, into Texas the game. Smoke could tell us. Third pitch of the night for the Pride. Strength, Sinceri Howe, Bailey Klingler. Good at bat. Battling trout line here. 
late in this ball game. Two balls, two strikes. Popped up. Trying right, hoping that uh, the sixth inning could be a little bit quicker than the fifth was for the Pride defensively. Not on that pitch, though. It's gone. And the hit parade continues. Grimm leaves the yard with a home run, and Sunsiri does the same. And Texas is on top, 8 to 1. And Shelby Sinceri just taking this pitch down in the zone. That is borderline birdie, birdie at her knees and shins right there. Great height. Not a bad pitch, but Shelby Sinceri so strong with it, driving it right in the right center field gap, deep over the wall. Well, folks, their offense was on point during the regular season. That's why they were the regular season champions. And everyone getting it done here tonight in game number two. They got an 8-1 lead now, up by seven. And how's the batter? Stand there, the ballpark will hold it. One away. Fly ball into center. Good now out in center. Klingler had the huge hit earlier. The game was still one to nothing when she came to the plate an inning ago in favor of the pride, if you will. And then with one swing, she gave Texas the lead with a base clearing three RBI double. This is it. An inning ago. Bailey Klingler was clutch. Look at her doing the dance out there on second base. Love the fun this Texas Smoke team is having. Find it up in should. the air and Kowalik sliding grab out number two. Just like Klinger continue the party with a double. Back-to-back -back doubles in the fifth. Not a bad night for Charlie Eichels. Single walk, double RBI run. 
she's been clutch all night long. And I love how the smoke have kind of passed the bat. So several players are coming through big. Granted over to first. Play made to retire the side, but not before Shelby Sinceri adds to the total for Texas. Leaving the yard and helping them score run number eight. And they find themselves six outs away from being WPF champions, up eight to one. to play like a pro stand out be different on and off the field custom gear look and feel welcome to the pro experience new balance team sports as we saw last night in the home run derby there are so many different types of swings that can be considered successful. We want to be strong, and plus, in our sport, we want to be able to connect our lower body to our upper body, right? Even at the collegiate level, athletes don't know enough information about nutrition to properly be fueling their bodies. As you get older and grow, that your brand should grow with you, and what you're posting should grow with you. All right, back here, bottom of the six. It's Aguilar leading off. Try and find themselves down to their final. Six outs here as Texas honing in on being the inaugural WPF champions. What a night for Pease. You can think about the way that the Pride scored the run. Espinosa hit by a pitch and then just really right place, right time, helped them score that game's first run. Pease has been dominant. It gets a little pop-up there of Aguilar. Take it for round number one here in the sixth. Bottom Pease has been so effective in the circle, just attacking the zone, wasting no time with that pitch efficiency there. And especially right now with a seven-run buffer, she should be throwing it right over the plate, allowing her defense to work behind her. And Rudd right back to Pease, over to first, two away. And Texas finds themselves four outs away from being crowned champions. And look at all the smiles on the, the smoke side. Inching closer. To being the champions, here's Spalding. I love it every moment. The coaching staff of the year. Right place, right time. One and one. Excuse me, swing. Second. 
two and two. Two outs, Pease trying to bring us to the seventh. Full count. Payoff pitch. Deep fly ball off the wall. And Spalding is going to get extra bases. She winds up at third with a triple. A lot of work to be done, down by seven, but uh, you can't cut into the lead unless you get one of the seven back. That would be step number one. And Delaney Spalding doing a great job just taking this pitch up in the zone, borderline letters high across her jersey, getting her hands extended to and through that ball. Just shy of a home run right there. Love the power display from Spalding in that no-quit attitude. Here is Espinosa hit by a pitch. Ball gets away, and in comes Spalding. She'll score. It's 8-2. to two. Try and get one of them back here in the sixth. And Delaney Spalding doing a good job just taking advantage right there, that pass ball opportunity between Pease and Jake Wish. Espinosa at the plate. Uh, Espinosa scored the only other run for the Pride. Back in the second. thought it was pretty good. Three and one. Comes back, gets a cold strike at 65 miles an hour and it's full. Chance for Pease to get her seventh strikeout here in game two. Not on that pitch. Thought away by Silent Rain Espinosa. Three, two, again. Slow roller to first. The Tiger retire the side. Spalding gets a triple. Comes in to score to make it 8-2. But Texas is closing in on the championship. Three outs away. Coming back to the plate for the seventh. best fast fish bats we've ever built. It's a very innovative bat that is going to make a big splash. It feels good, it sounds good. The new MDX Max Composite Construction is our highest performing fast fish bat barrel to date. When we looked to design our new fast fish lines, utilizing the BPL, we brought in female athletes to study the way their swings work specifically for these new fast fish bats. The Echo Diamond is the R1 piece bat line. It's ultra-balanced design. This is going to fit a large number of players. 
we have our liquid gel dampening knob that helps absorb vibrations faster and more efficiently than ever before. The Echo Connect Diamond is a mid-load two-piece bat, has a little bit more weight in the barrel for effortless power. On the Echo Connect Diamond, we have our OLS, or Outer Locking System, which is a sleeve that connects the barrel to the handle from the outside in. This stops vibrations from getting to the player's hands before it even reaches the handle. The new Diamond lines actually feature a hotter out the wrapper, faster break-in, higher performing barrel than we've ever had giving players what they need to command the diamond. And back here for the seventh inning. Final inning of game number two. Texas leading one game to none, and they find themselves now three outs away from being crowned the inaugural champions. Jaquish, Bryan, and Bruni against Hope Troutwine, who came into the game in the sixth, gave up a solo home run to Shelby Sanseri. Popped up, left side, caught by Spalding. Great job, Paul! looking on. He meets a monstrous rally in the bottom of the seventh. And you've got Hope Trotwine in the circle just trying to do whatever she can to get her team back into the offense as quickly as possible without any further run production here from the smoke. <laughs> you know, Bernie, I think the craziest thing is the smoke offense has been so good late in the ball game. Their ability to make adjustments so quickly. Yeah, they've been on point. They've been in a, a number of games where they're tight. And then fifth, sixth, seventh, they just turn on the gas and they find a way to get it done. <laughs> Rivera adds to the total. She leaves the yard as well, and it's nine to two. <laughs> I'm here for the smoke, folks. Rivera. Emotional after she leaves the yard. Alyssa Rivera, the pinch hit home run. You love to see athletes making adjustments this quickly into their opportunities. Because when you're coming in as a pinch hitter, all you're doing is fighting for a chance. And to come through in the big moment when you get the chance, means everything. As if they needed some extra insurance, Rivera was there. <laughs> and Tori Tyson over to congratulate her player after that home run.
One ball, two strikes. Holds back, two and two. Certainly got to thank Oxford, Alabama on being such a phenomenal host this season, bringing in the Smash It Sports Vipers team. And of course, hosting this inaugural playoff as you see this ball hit into center. It's gonna be extra bases. And Bruni finds herself at third. Everybody's hitting it tonight for Texas. Anna Marie Bruni coming through big right there. That pitch left right over the middle of the plate. And Bruni taking full advantage, just getting those hands extended, driving it deep over the head of Gooden out there in center field. And Bruni's fired up, just continuing the hit fast here, Bernie. And hey, when everybody's hitting, you want to join the party, right? Absolutely. Feels good. Getting triples, everybody smiling, and Grimm, who uh, left the yard. Getting another opportunity. Can she do it again? If it was fair, she would have. Hit a long way, but foul. Strains it out there, though, and Grimm goes yard for the second time tonight. Oh, my goodness. Eleven to two. Madison Grimm, just another pitch left right over the middle of the plate. And so much pop in that bat just gets her hands extended beautifully, driving it deep into the pull side. Another bomb for Grimm. And Bernie, those bombs aren't just clearing the fence by a couple of feet. Those are absolute tanks. Jefferson trying to get one more crack at it this season. It's going to be a while till season number two in June of next summer, and uh, I'm sure these guys want to keep hitting. Foul. It's not easy to be the regular season champions. and win the championship at the end of the year. But that's what Texas is about to do. Coach Tyson has put it together. It's a team that was really in a fight against the Vipers. Went to the if game, the 
Texas Smoke, the coaching staff of the year. And Cardiff, who started the ball game back in the ball game. fun this Texas squad. Gotta take it all in. In the way the smoke have really banded together, just trying to get things going their way, make things happen no matter how it gets done. It's been so fun to watch because true fans of the game, true competitors out there on the field, you have to appreciate it and you have to respect it. Brandon Phillips and squad enjoying the moment. That ball, that ball. And Thomas is going to come to the plate. She's hit by pitch. She'll get a board. Pitch is getting away from Ali Carta, up and in. Here's Morgan Howe. He's one of the, the rare passes. smoke players that doesn't have a hit tonight. She did walk and score though. Even up two and two. Texas up by nine. Down the line, fair. They're going to add to their total. How with her first hit of the night. And Bernie, I think Morgan Howe heard you and she said, yeah, I see you. I, I know I haven't gotten a hit yet tonight, but here you go. Here's one attack onto the books. Driving it right there down the line. Easy double. And Texas with a 10 run lead now here in the top of the seventh. And Klingler back to the plate. Who had the big hit earlier and put Texas on the board. What seems like uh, hours ago now. To make it three to one, they now lead it 12 to two. Really Klingler, the eighth batter of this inning. Three RBI double.
Popped up into center. Thomas is going to come in to score. And the throw gets away, and Morgan Howe will score as well, and it's 14 to 2. And it's the second time today that uh, the Texas, the entire Texas team is going to come to the plate in an inning. Well, and the smoke offense just wasting absolutely no time. You see that throw getting away from Bunk over there at third base. Morgan Howell easily coming in to score, attacking on another run. Giving that 12 run ball for Bernie. That's huge. So Eccles is the ninth batter here in the seventh. On a strength with two away. Nichols has got two hits and a walk tonight. Two and two. Called strength three. Moves Hassan to the bottom of the seventh. Here in the championship game. 14 runs in for Texas. This is how they did it. Take a look at our game recap. Probably got on the board first. A little blue play back in the second and they led one to nothing early, Alex. And that's essentially what I thought was going to be some exciting moments there for the Pride, some pivotal times. Pride scoring first. I thought that might be the difference for a while because we had seen the pitchers duel back and forth, but then the smoke really turned it around. Defense coming through, flashing some leather. Big double play right there by Bailey Klingler over at first base. And now Bernie is when the smoke really started to break it open. Yeah, fifth inning and a one nothing game. Bailey Klingler clears the bases. Gives him a 3-1 lead. And then the runs kept coming. Eccles with a double. And at the end of the, the fifth inning, 10 came to the plate. And Texas found themselves with a huge lead, capped off by this home run by Grimm. And the smoke came through, scoring eight runs in that top of the fifth inning. That was huge, really setting the tone for the next couple of innings of work for the smoke offense. Shelby Sensiri added to the total with a solo shot in the sixth. And then we just saw the seventh inning where Rivera opened up with a home run, and they batted all the way around once again in the inning. Grimm leaving the yard for the second time. And Autumn Pease and company now three outs away from being the inaugural champion for the WPF. What a season. Brandon Phillips taking the moment in. Ready to celebrate. Winning the title. Ground ball to Eccles. One away. And Texas needs two more outs.
Shomo the batter with one away. It's not easy to have a franchise in their first year put together this type of a roster. They were dominant during the regular season. In fact, the two expansion teams finished first and second in the league. They get the coaching staff of the year. And they put it all together. It's been a phenomenal first year for the Texas Smoke. They should be so proud of all that they've accomplished. First year of creation, Bernie. I think that's the most impressive piece. It's one thing to build a fantastic organization from the ground up, you know, by way of talent, by ownership, by leadership, with the coaching staff and your general managers and everybody in those positions. But to just come in here and do it all in year one, it's incredible. Shomo with a base hit to stay alive. Got to credit Oklahoma City and what they did in the first season. They found themselves right behind Texas at the end of the regular season, knocking on the door. And they certainly had a chance to be the regular season champions. The Spark had, a, to your point, Burn, a fantastic first year of work as well. So much to be proud of. No balls, two strikes. Foul away again. Autumn Pease with six Ks in the contest, trying to get her seventh year. In the bottom of the seventh. One and two. Called strike three. Seven strikeouts for Peace. And Texas is one out away. Another big out right there for Autumn Peace. She's been phenomenal in the circle, spinning it all night long. And Bernie, I'm just so continually impressed with her composure out there and the competitor that she is in the circle. And here is Kowalik.
Trying to get her first hit of the night. With Texas one out away. Ground ball to short. They flip to second, and Texas on top. They're the WPF champions in the inaugural season. Congratulations all around to the Texas Smoke. Year one of creation, regular season champions, WPF tournament champions. Phenomenal first year, and they should be really proud of all that they accomplished. Huge offensive night for the smoke. What a night for the smoke. Tori Tyson celebrating the title, going back to Texas in their first season. And man, did they push the pedal from the fifth inning on, trailing one to nothing. They wind up with a 14 to two victory tonight. Not a piece. Brilliant inside the circle, but you got a whole lot of help offensively. Autumn Peace has been phenomenal all season long, but really shown the last couple of nights. Really big outing here tonight, but Bernie, it was. It was the offense, 13 hits, 14 runs tonight, and just the level of competitiveness shown by this smoke offense, only four strikeouts, and just the ability to make adjustments late in the ball game, not scoring that first run until the fifth inning says all you need to know they're a team of adjustments and they're patient and they just are going to chip away and work hard every single pitch every single at bat until somebody gets their turn and when they do they're going to take advantage 14-2 victory for the smoke and Bailey Klingler had the big hit of the night for Texas All right, Bailey Klinger, what are you feeling right now, WPF champion? Man, I don't know how to describe it. I think they explained it all. They got all the energy. I think that this was a great team win, and it's just been a really fun season, and it was cool to see it all come together in the last game. And a huge momentum shift for the smoke in the fifth inning. What was the conversation in the dugout? Just be aggressive, and we said before, before the game today, just going all out by any means, find a way to win. Um, and in the dugout, I talked to AP, I was like, bro, I got you. Like, you've been throwing so much, like, like I promise I got you. I told Nate the same thing. So really just playing for each other, and that was huge. And you were at the forefront of that momentum shift with that three RBI double you hit. What was going through your mind during that at bat? Just doing it for my teammates, you know? Like I just said, like having a conversation with them and saying I got y'all and just pull it, like showing up big whenever it matters. I think that was huge. So I know they got my back, I got theirs. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Go smoke, baby, let's go! Bailey Klingler, an impressive night. Had the big hit for Texas. When she came to the plate, her team trailing one to nothing and they wind up tonight with a 14 to two win celebrating. The regular season champions, the tournament champions, the ownership group, Brandon Phillips put together an incredible team. And they got a big performance tonight from Autumn Pease, who was impressive inside the circle and finished the night with seven strikeouts. Now joined by Autumn Pease. Autumn, you held the pride to only two runs. What was the mindset on the mound tonight? Um, just go out there, let my team uh, work. Obviously, we have a great defense. We have Janae and they, Charla. Like, they literally made every play that was possible. So just pitching pretty free. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it was it's nice. I wasn't at full, 100%. So I was able to allow my team to do all the work. One more question, then I'll let you go dry off. Yeah. <laughs> How does having a defense like them behind you give you a sense of comfort on the mound? Um, I can miss, and it's okay. Um, I don't have to be at 100%, and my defense is still going to have my back. So it's really nice to be able to just throw however I want and know that they'll be able to get me. Well, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. Thank you. Autumn Pease, seven strikeouts tonight inside the circle. Uh, phenomenal effort. We are getting set for the trophy presentation here in Oxford, Alabama. The Schiff Hour Cup being presented for the first time. And it's going to Texas, Brandon Phillips and the Smoke, who win this championship two games to none over the Pride. A tight win last night, five to four, but the offense opens up and they get a 14 to two victory tonight. As they await the trophy. Let's listen in here in Oxford, Alabama to the trophy ceremony. What a moment for this team. Celebrating the title here in Oxford, Alabama. They put it all together.
14 runs scored in the final three innings for the Texas Smoke. One happy ownership group. Got into the league. First season, and his team gets it done. The coaching staff of the year put together an incredible roster here in the first season. And indeed, they are number one. And they'll bring home the inaugural Schiffhauer Cup. And let's listen in to the award ceremony for this inaugural WPF championship. Athletes who competed this week. Like Tommy said, I'm joined right now with Don Hudson, the director of the Parks and Recreational Department here in Oxford. And Don, what an exciting series and what an exciting week it's been. Great week. And on behalf of the city of Oxford, we were honored and are honored to have been the host city for this championship series. And one other thing, the exhibition of fast pitch softball quality could not be beaten. The balls that were hit on the button that flew over the center field wall and all, all during the tournament. The defensive plays that were made, great, great tournament, great players. And we are very proud to have you in Oxford and are very proud of hosting this tournament. Thank you. Congratulations to both teams once again. And now we have a couple awards to give out. The first one being the Championship Series MVP. Drum roll, please. The WPF 2023 Championship Series MVP is the one and only Janae Jefferson. And now it's the time we've all been waiting for, the time to crown our champions. Your 2023 WPF champions goes to the Texas Smoke. <laughs> Give it 
up for the smoke one more time, everyone. Thank you again to everyone for coming out this week and to the city of Oxford and Chakalaka Park for being the proud hosts of the first ever WPF Championships. Everyone have a great night and get home safely. Can you ask if they're ready for me to jump? Sorry, what's up? Can you ask if they're ready for me to jump? Texas champions of the inaugural WPF season celebrating the win tonight in Oxford, Alabama. What a season it was. We thank all of you for joining us all along the ride from the beginning of June all the way through this championship that belong to the expansion Texas Smoke getting it done tonight in Oxford, bringing home the Schiffauer Cup after they win the series over the USSA Pride. Two games to none tonight. 14 runs scored in the final three innings as they bring the title back to Austin. For Alex Powers and our entire WPF crew that brought you the sights and sounds all season long, Bernie Gunther saying good night from Oxford, Alabama, where Texas finds themselves on top and they win the title.